of every kind or what the ground causes to grow on them, themselves, that is to say human beings, and of what they do not know. In the field of physiology, there is a verse which appears to be extremely significant. But to understand it, we have to know that chemical reactions occur in the intestine and that substances extracted from food inside pass into the bloodstream and that the bloodstream transport them to all the organs of the body among which are the milk producing mammary gland. That is precisely what is said in this verse of the Surah Al-Nahl. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَلَامِ لَا إِبْرَةً نُسْكِكُمْ مِنْ مَا فِي بُتُونِهِ مِنْ بَيْنِ فَخْثِينَ وَالْدَّمِينَ لَبَنًا غَلِسًا سَيْرًا لِشَارِبِينَ Verily in cattle there is a lesson for you. We give you to drink what is inside their bodies coming from a conjunction between the contents of the intestine and the blood, a milk pure and pleasant for those who drink it. The Quranic revelation considerably enriched a man with data about himself, as we shall see. But its teachings have been clearly and completely understood only in modern times. As a medical doctor particularly attracted to the natural sciences and physiology, I must confess that when I read the Quran, Excuse me, when I read the Quran in the original text for the first time, these data concerning man were those which impressed me the most. This is the reason why, as soon as I have finished my first study, the Bible, the Quran and science, I seized a favorable opportunity to deliver a lecture before the French Academy of Medicine with a special reference to human reproduction in the Quran. In order to carry out a valid comparison, one must remember that there existed a host of superstitions and myths about this topic in days of old and emphasized the absence of any reference in the Quran to the mistaken ideas prevalent at the time of the communication to man. Let us mention that several verses evoke the complexity of the male fertilizing liquid and the fact that an infinitely small quantity of this liquid expressed by Nutfa in the Quran is required to ensure fertilization. This is also expressed by quintessence, if I may so translate the Arabic word Sulala. The implantation of the egg in the female genital organ is perfectly described in several verses by the word alak, as in the surah al-alak. Ralakan insana min alak. But my translation is the following one. God fashioned the man from something which clings. I do not think that there is any accurate translation of the word alak, other than to use its, once more, its primitive meaning. To speak here of an adherence or a blood clot is a mistake. They are both derivative meanings quite out of place in this context. The evolution of the embryo inside the maternal uterus is a subject of reflection whose simple words correspond exactly to fundamental stages in its growth, as it appears in this verse of the Surah al-Muminun. We fashion the thing which clings into a shoot lump of flesh, and we fashion the shoot flesh into bones, and we clothe the bones 
with intact flesh. Thus, an initial aspect of the embryo is evoked and thereafter the muscles covering the bones. We know that the embryo passes through a stage when some of its parts are out of proportion with what is later to become the individual. The Surah El Hajj seems to allude to this. Fa inna ralaknakum min alakatin min mudratin muhalakatin wa khayri muhalakatin. We fashioned you into something which clings, into a lump of flesh in proportion and out of proportion. In the Surah El Sajda, there is a reference to the senses and the viscera. Wajjala lakum el sama wal absara wal afidata. God appointed for you the senses of hearing, sight, and the viscera. All these quotations are in harmony with what was to be discovered many centuries later. In view of the state of knowledge in Prophet Muhammad's day, it is inconceivable that many of the statements in the Quran which are connected with signs could have been the work of a man. It is therefore perfectly legitimate not only to regard the Quran as the expression of a revelation, but also to award it a very special place on account of the guarantee of authenticity it provides and the presence in it of reflections which, when studied today, appear as a challenge to human explanation. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for your kind attention. Assalamu alaikum. I believe in theory of evolution as profound by zoologist Grace Gracie. If you do, then it is not compatible with teachings of Quran as discussed by Sheikh Abdul Maboud in his article. Excuse me, but I do not know the article of Sheikh Abdul Maboud. Excuse me, also that I cannot compare with the, the CRA, the CRA which is not uh, the CRA of Professor Grasset himself alone, not at all, which is described in this book, What is the Origin of Man? I have written a small chapter about the creative evolution is what is now absolutely sure be, since now we know that the genome are responsible for the transformation of the functions of the cells consequently to transformation of the of tissues and consequently transformation of the entire uh, living being. There is no doubt about that. And recently, I had the pleasure to read a book which was written by a, a famous um, theolo Iranian theologian. Unfortunately, I cannot remember the name. 